think the overall skepticism coming out of the Iraq experience has colored everything here. Uh, the, the president's assurances, of, you know, and, and you, you've got this contradiction. On the one hand, he's saying, I'm not going to own the war. I'm not going to put boots on the ground. What I have in mind is a limited strike. But then that actually undermines the argument for action because people are saying, well, if it's not going to make a difference in the Syrian civil war, why do it? And if you take action the first time, will you come back to us as, as did happen in our experience in Vietnam, that you have to up the ante because your first step you know, did not have the impact that you wanted. This is, this is a great conundrum. I think the, I think the, the White House's strategy uh, is, is very coherent. It, 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 using military force in support, coercively, in support of, of diplomacy. That was what worked in the context of Kosovo. But okay. again, selling that to a skeptical public uh, is very, very difficult. And uh, what if he doesn't sell it to a sceptical public and Congress, more importantly, he doesn't get the vote if and when it happens, would he go on regardless and carry out military strikes against Syria? I think that's a very, very difficult calculation. Obviously, Prime Minister Cameron, uh, you know, even it was a close vote in the House of Commons, but he said <clears throat> that the vote reflects the will of the people and we will respect the will of the people. I think at the end of this, uh, Obama will be forced, having sought a vote from Congress, to respect uh, you know, whatever you know, Congress's judgment is. That's what makes this Russian proposal sure. more significant because it provides a political off-ramp and puts the issue back in the United Nations where many in the United States and many around the world feel it, it belongs. But he's tied himself into carrying out some kind of military strike. When you hear the Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein saying, look, he said if the use of chemical weapons is, is proven to have been done by, uh, by acid, that constitutes the crossing of a red line. If Obama does nothing, he's going to look like a paper tiger. Aaron David Miller, highly respected Middle East peace negotiator for the Americans, advised six secretaries of state. He says... The conventional wisdom of those who favor strikes is that nobody will take Obama seriously on any other issue if he doesn't go ahead with the strikes. His credibility is at stake. His credibility is at stake, as is the international communities. But again, I think that the Russian proposal has fundamentally changed the politics of this on any number of levels. And I think it actually strengthens you know, the president's case. For example, uh, you know, with the French proposal to go to the United Nations with a resolution, uh, if, if Russia fails to sure. push hard enough or if Syria fails to cooperate, that actually strengthens the case for military action. It provides some time for the UN inspectors to come back with their results that at least documents, contrary to Syrian uh, comments to the contrary, that in fact there was uh, the use of chemical weapons okay. uh, in, the, in the Syrian civil war. Bef so so I, th I think this provides more leverage to Obama rather than less. When a senator, former Senator Joe Lieberman says, are we perceived as a divided and dysfunctional superpower in retreat whose words and warnings are no longer meaningful, do you think the U.S. is a superpower in retreat? I think there's a risk there, and I think if the, if the president suffers a defeat in the Congress, um, it, it either diminishes uh, his presidency at home or it diminishes confidence in American leadership abroad. Uh, I, I certainly was surprised when the president pressed the pause button rather than the launch button. Okay. I think he felt that he did not have enough you know, political legitimacy to proceed with the strike uh, given what had happened in the British Parliament. And just 10 seconds, P.J. Crowley. It's ironic, isn't it, that the man who won the Peace Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize, is now the man advocating military strikes against Syria. Do you see that irony briefly? Uh, I do see that irony, but by the same token, he doesn't want to own a significant war in Syria. I think the Russian proposal gives him a chance to get what he wants, which is a peaceful political solution.